everywhere, streaming and all across the country, wherever you're watching from, I want you to do us a favor. I want you to right now, I want you to go to, if you're on Facebook and you're watching this, I want you to love this. Don't like it. Love it. And I want you to share it. And then I want you to share it to your homeboy's page. I want you to share it to your uncle's page. Share it, share it, share it, because when you share this, it's getting out and you're actually evangelizing. This is your way to, to evangelize. Don't be stingy with the anointing. Tell the person next to you, don't be stingy, don't be stingy. with the anointing. All right. And then again, in the South Campus, we welcome you. Let's give our South Campus a great big hand. We welcome you all. I'll see you all shortly. I got to get down there, take care of some family business down there. So uh, we're going to go uh, into prayer and jump into this word. Would you bow your heads, please? Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, I love you so much. I love you so much. Send that anointing as you've done over the last nine years. That makes preaching and teaching easy. Send the power, the breakthrough power. Send revelation through your word. Send your glory. Surgically repair everything in us that's lacking because of a lack of love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're in the middle of a series called Be Loved. Tell the person next to you, neighbor, you're the beloved. So be loved. Extend your hands toward them because they need to feel that. Say, neighbor, you're the beloved, so be loved. This series has been amazing. I am overcome, radically changed by a love encounter. I know now what I did not know three weeks. I had it in my head, but not in my heart three weeks ago until the Lord gave me this and said he wants me to teach this to the people so we can relearn his love. And during this situation, we have learned, number one, that when you get an understanding of the perfected love of God, you have an idea that God's intentions for you are only good. I need you to say that. God's intentions for me me are only good. good. When you get an understanding that God's intentions for you are only good, number one, you handle trouble differently. You don't manipulate to try to Make trouble go away because you know that in the end of the trouble, it's only good for you. When you understand the perfected love of God, you have an idea now that I don't have to be an imposter. I don't have to be a representative. I don't have to hurt other people to get ahead because what God has for me is only for me. And it's all good, right? So in this, I have noticed something. The first week that I taught this, people were crying the entire message. Not because I'm ugly. But because the anointing for love was generating in each heart as I was speaking, people were texting in saying, I cannot believe that this amount of power is coming through the screen. At the end of the first week, men were all across the front, some on the ground crying like babies because they're experiencing the love of God that they've never uh, experienced before. The love of God, God already loves you. But then there's another thing called a love encounter. It's almost like the Holy Spirit. Like God, we, we know God's spirit is everywhere, but then you got to get filled with the Holy Spirit. So in these services, people have been having that love encounter. And if you've ever had it, you would know. You would know that you've had it. The second week, uh, we had a storm come, so we only had a few people uh, to come through. But the power of God and the power of love was so strong. Man, I want to run out of here and just jump in a love pool somewhere. God baptized us in his love so strong that we could not leave until an hour after service was over. People were on their faces, on the ground, crying, screaming, yelling, being silent because the love of God was permeating us to the point. It was nothing scripted. It's so real, you guys. It it is so real. It was so powerful that Jalen, he was over here on the keys Put the camera on me. He was over here on the keys, and he was like, hallelujah! Hallelujah! I I never see him do that. He was like, oh, thank you, Lord! I said, no, I know Jesus is coming back. If Jalen is... But the power of God was so strong on him. He said he felt a weight. See, the word glory is the Greek, is uh, the Hebrew word kabod, which means weight, weightiness of God. He felt a weight come on him, and, and this weight pushed him down to the ground. He was holding one cord for 30 minutes straight while the weight was pushing him on the ground. 
he got on the ground and the weight pushed his hands on a sustain pedal. So the keys were playing, but it was sustaining in one chord for 30 minutes straight, straight love and straight power. And he could not lift his hands off of it. Because he felt that if he would have lifted his hands, the glory would have stopped. When he lifted his hands, the glory increased. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I'm ready for a love encounter. And then after that, we got a call. And this is what, you know, you have a blessed church. I hope you know that. And I'm not just saying that because I go here, but I do go here. This is a blessed, it's a blessed ministry. You know, I had a... um, I had, a, I, had a, I had a text come through, and I had an email come through from someone who does not go here, who does not know anything um, about our church, who, who, just, who was just watching because somebody shared. And, and they sent a text saying, I, they, they text the member saying that since I was a little child, I have never experienced the power of God coming through a television screen like that. I don't know if she's here this morning, but she said, I will be there. I'm bringing my adult children and I'm bringing my grandbabies. That's what the love of the love of God is multi-generational. The love of God is in multimedia. It doesn't have to be right here. The love of God will touch you wherever you are. Put your hands on the person next to you and say, the love of God God touches touches you now. Here's an email that came through. An email says, that was the most awesome service I have I have seen since I lived in Ohio 15 years ago. I live in Georgetown now, but I will be coming to your service this week. You see how that is? The love of God is so, so, so powerful. So this week, I want to I want to deal with the love of God one more time. Week three. And I'll, I'll probably deal with deal with it one more time after that, because I need for you to have a love encounter. Every, everything changes when this happens to you. Everything changes. So I want you to go with me to the book of Mark. Go, go with me to Mark chapter 10. Now, this particular text here is one of the texts that you can find in um, just about every gospel. You can find it in Matthew chapter 19. You can find it here in Mark 10. You can find it in Luke chapter 18. And each one of these is dealing with the rich young ruler. And something significant happened to me as it relates to Revelation uh, when, I, when I read this scripture. And I'm going to try to explain it better than I did in the first, uh, the first service. So, so Matthew chapter 10 uh, it, sh- it should be on your screen there. It says this. It says, now I'm reading the New King James language. Now as he was going out on the road, talking about Jesus, one came running to him. He knelt down before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? And that was a rhetorical question. I'll explain that some other day. He says, no one is good but God. Now he answers him. He says, You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Don't defraud your neighbor. Honor your father and mother. And the guy answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then watch verse 21. Then Jesus looked, looking at him, what? Loved him. He comes and he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus tells him the last half of the six commandments. And then Jesus, he says, he says, the the God says, I've done all this stuff, Lord. Then Jesus says, the Bible says he he looked at him and he loved him. And then watch his statement. His statement was, he says, one thing you lack. Go your way, sell whatever you have to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Come, take up your cross and follow me. But he was sad at this, and he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Here's how the Lord worked with me on that scripture. So I read it, and I didn't get it. I'm sitting there reading it. Now, me and Marquita, we were upstairs, and we got a suite upstairs. And in our our, our suite upstairs, I had just crushed her in Uno. (laughs) Very badly, my life. Uh, but anyway, so I I, I, I just, the Lord, Lord, my favor kicked in, and then Uno. So as we played Uno... Um, we stopped playing and I started reading the word. And as I was reading this word, Marquita had no idea what I was reading. As I'm reading it, I said, Lord, I said, I don't get this. Why did you love, like, nobody, there's no commentaries on why you loved him. He came to you, you rebuked him, and you loved him. I don't get it. 
And then I said out of my mouth, I said, I said, Lord, would you really give me revelation on this? And Marquita, not knowing anything, she looks up and she says, why wouldn't he give you revelation on it? And I'm like, okay. So I was like, all right, get out of here. Whatever. So, so about, about five minutes later, less than five minutes later, she says these words. Now, here, I'm seeking revelation, right? Re- I'm seeking this, the understanding of this. And then less than five minutes later, she says to me, she says, Gerald, you know, I was just looking at um, Oprah and T.D. Jakes, and I was looking at Oprah's life, how Oprah, she, she gives a lot to people, but she won't get married. She gives a lot to people, but she won't have children. And we discovered that the reason why she's like that is because of the way she was brought up. She was brought up in an abusive situation, so she didn't want to get married. She didn't want to have children, and so, and so she didn't want that to be perpetuated in the earth, right? When Marquita says this, I'm like, oh, my God. The revelation came on that passage. We discovered that some people are big givers but very selfish. The reason why Jesus looked at this man and loved him is because when Jesus saw him, that he was a man of great possessions, Jesus saw that he didn't get it because of a hurt in his childhood. Jesus saw that this man won't even receive eternal life because somebody taught him that his self-worth was in his possessions. He's got a whole bunch of people around him, but no one's really loving him. So I love you, so I'm going to expose you to where you're lacking. Here's my point. The love of God, when you have the true love of God, someone say, Lord, fill me with your love. love. The true love of God comes to confront your imposture to expose your lack. He comes to confront your religious facade, to expose where you're really missing it, where you're really not getting it. And that's real love, you all. Real love is not always being nice to you. Real love is show me my blind spots. Real love is show me where I'm I'm slow. Show me where I'm behind. And, And this is what the love of God is coming to do for you today. There's some blind spots in your life. There's some spaces where you say, Lord, why them and not me? Where there's something lacking in you. And God says, if you let me love you enough, I'll expose the lack to you. Sometimes God uses people to come to you and tell you where you're lacking. But, but just like the rich young ruler, if you're not careful and you don't understand the perfected love of God, you will reject them and walk away sad because of what you have, because of your religious postures and our facade. Y'all with me so far? The love of God comes to you to expose your lack. I love that about God. He loves me beyond making me feel good all the time. He doesn't want me to, he don't want me to always feel good. He wants me to be filled. Hallelujah. So, so, so let's look at the word lack. This Greek word lack, I'm going to educate you a little bit. This Greek word lack is made up of two words. Watch this. And you guys know I like to go into the Greek and, and, and teach you for deeper meaning. Now, it says hysteria, hysteria. That H-Y-S, the first part of that has to do with, it's like, it's almost like the word hypo, like hypo, hypochondriac or hypodermic for those of you in the medical field. Hypo, hypodermic means, hypo means under, like under the skin. So stereo is, is a musical sound, which means that if it's monologue, then it's coming, it's coming from one speaker. But if it is, if it's stereo, it's coming from two speakers. So in this man's life, he experienced the lack which caused him to be less than uh, his full sound. He, he's operating at half capacity. See, see, you are a sound. You are a piece of dirt that was spoken into the earth, right? And, that, and you, you were created to make a sound before the Lord. But when you lack, you're operating at, operating at half mass. About two people got that. Someone say, Lord, give me my full sound. Your whole life is just a sound. Your whole life is music, but you can't be operating with two bars. That was for the rappers. I got two bars. That's it. (laughs) This word lack, Jesus said, I'm coming to you, man. I'm going to expose your lack. Everyone else around you, they're just sucking up to you because you got money and possessions. Everyone else around you is telling you how good you are, but I'm loving you deeper than your facade. I know the real you. I know the real hurt that's in you as a child. And that's what Jesus is saying to some of you right now. I know your real hurt. You came to church today in a beautiful car, but I know your real hurt. You came with your religious postures and you came with your hands lifted up and you came with the best clothes and smelling like the best perfume and cologne. But I know your real lack. I know what you came in here with. I know what you're covering up. I know the reason why you're so angry and disgruntled. I know the reason why you have anxiety and I'm coming to feel your, love, your lack of love. 
I'm coming to fill your lack with love. When a person is lacking, that means that they're behind. Anybody felt like that before? Why am I behind, Lord? Jesus is coming to fill your lack. When a person is lacking, come, they, that means that they're, they're coming up late or, or tardy. They're coming into their season tardy. You're coming into your season, but we're lacking. And Jesus now is about to fill you with his love and accelerate time for you. It's time to catch up. Love, whoa, love catches you up. <laughs> to be left behind in the face and so frail or not reaching a goal to fall short of the end. Failure to become a partaker or to fall back from. Or to be inferior. This is what the rich young ruler was. He was inferior. He had a lot. And by him being a rich young ruler, that means that he was a ruler in a synagogue. The chief priest at this time, his name was Caiaphas. And everyone else up under that was, they were rulers. But he was ruling yet inferior. And that's how we are right now. Even some of you, you are, you are bosses on your job. You're ruling, but you're inferior because you treat people bad. And you treat people bad because you have a lack of understanding of the perfected love of God. Because the perfected love of God serves people and not rules people. Some of us in ministry, we got a whip. We're cracking a whip on people, making people do stuff, making people serve, and making people do these. That's not the perfected love of God. The perfected love of God says you are servants or you're the least of the least. Step on my back to go higher. This is the love of God. The love of God comes to confront See, see, here's how the love of God operates. The love of God does not see you as a problem. The love of God sees that you have a problem. When you operate with that level of love, you treat people completely different. They had all that money over there. Why aren't they feeding the poor with it? Well, how about it could be that they're just hurt as a child and they're a hoarder because they were poor. How, see, see that they have a problem, not that they are a problem. Who in your life is a problem right now? Who in your life is a problem right now? Who in your life is a problem? Nobody raise their hand because you know I'm about to rebuke you. <laughs> if someone in your life is a problem, then you're the problem. Because the problem really is that you have to understand the perfected love of God. Because you've got to see that they have a problem and meet that need. Love shows up and meets the need. Love shows up and says, well, you got all this stuff, but this one thing that you lack. Sell everything that you got. Give to the poor. And come follow me, and then you'll have treasure in heaven. If this man, well, this is so beautiful about this. If this man, Pastor Corey and I, we were talking in the office. If this man would have stayed there, the Bible says he walked away. The love of God came. He met love face to face. Love of God came. If he would have stayed, Jesus completed the sentence afterwards. Jesus said, no man who gives up houses and cars and lands there is not a person that does that that will now receive in this world houses, cars, and lands a hundredfold now and in this world to come. If he would have just stayed a little bit longer, let the love of God confront him a little bit longer. Somebody's about to, be, about to give up. But God says, you got to stay a little bit longer. Let me give you my love a little bit longer. And I'll take your lack and fill you up. Someone lift your hands up and say, Lord, Lord. give me a love encounter. Man, the love of God comes to fill you with what you're lacking, but not before he releases you from your viruses. God's love comes to fill you. But he says, first, I got to get the viruses out of you. He's got to get the viruses out of us. And you know what the problem is with people having viruses? Is that some of us are asymptomatic. An asymptomatic person is a person that's sick but has no symptoms. Functioning but sick. People won't tell you that you're sick. People are around you a feeding into the sickness, giving you some sugar, some bleached sugar. When we should be giving each other something that's pure and natural. We need to be eating close to the ground, even in the realm of the natural, telling people, listen, I love you, but this is one thing that you lack. Hallelujah. And we need to be able to be in, we need to be able to be 
in position to receive when someone tells us that we're sick. Hallelujah. Pastor Joe, you're teaching good today. The love of God comes, man, to expose your viruses. But the problem is that some of us are asymptomatic. And when we're asymptomatic, we can't, we can't, we can't see uh, what's actually going on with us. Now, here's the deal. Let me, let me, let me, I'm about to conclude this because right now I'm just talking about the perfected love of God, how God wants to love you. And he, he wants you to know that he wants you to have a love encounter. He wants you to know that his love is so safe. His love has your best interest at heart. You don't have to be a hypocrite or you don't have to manipulate for someone to love you. Manipulate for position, telling on people to make them look bad. Criticizing people because you want their position, their position. I don't want anything that his love doesn't have for me. Because if I get what his love doesn't have for me, hate will break me. You'll catch that two weeks from now. So, so the love of God now, uh, here, here's the deal. I love this part here. If you get a revelation of the perfected love of God, you will see that the love of God operates differently when it's reciprocal. Meaning that when he's loving on you and you're loving back on him, if you stay in that state, I'm loving you, you're loving me, I'm loving you, you're loving me. It's the Psalms, it's the Psalms of Solomon 2.16. I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. I'm loving you, you're loving me, I'm loving you. You love. The Bible says if you stay in that state, then Jesus himself will manifest himself to you. Now I got two mm's and one yes. You know why? Because you've never had that happen to you before. But I'm telling you, as a man of God, if you want to have an encounter with the real Jesus, you have to have a reciprocal love relationship with him. Say, prove it, Pastor. Prove it. Now, let's go to the Bible. John chapter 14. John chapter 14 says this. It says, he who, uh, John 14, 21 is on your screen, New King James language. He who has my commandments and keeps them is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. Watch this. And I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. If you have my commandments, he's not talking about the commandments in the book of Exodus chapter 20. He's not talking about that. He's talking about his commandments. Every Christian, make sure that you write this down. Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. Those three chapters are Jesus' commandments. If you follow those, you have his commandments. He who has my commandments loves me. I said it's reciprocal, right? My father will love him. And then he says, I will love him. And then I will manifest myself to him. February 2016. I've told this story before. I'll tell it again. February 2016, I'm in my room. And as I'm in my room, I, I thought I was having a heart attack. I was at my home over on Pablo Way, Paloma Lake. And... I woke up and I thought I was dying. My spirit came out of my body and I went down into hell. I saw hell. There's nothing you can do to make me leave Jesus. I saw hell, the real hell. I'm not, I'm not talking about like I ate some peanut butter, ate some pizza or something like that and had a, a wild dream. I saw it, the real hell. I was in hell and I won't take time and belabor you with the point with the things that are in hell. I'll just tell you, watch your music. And watch the things that you allow to enslave you on this earth that you won't get rid of, the vices. Watch the things that the love encounter is trying to show you your lack in. Okay, watch those things. But as I come, so I thought I had went to hell. I'm a good preacher. I'm up here loving on people, loving my wife, doing the right thing, and I'm in hell. But then I come out of hell, didn't go to heaven, but I went above the earth and I saw the earth. And I saw some things going on in the earth. I come back into my room. And back into my body, and Jesus Christ is standing in my room. The real Jesus. He manifests himself to me. You know what he did when he uh, manifests himself to me? He confronted my religion and exposed my lack. He rebuked me. He told me these words. It was him talking to me, you all. He said this. He said... You have been secretly wishing that I hurt the people that hurt you. Because that's why I was going through that thing. That's why I was going through that stress, you see. Because I had my religious facade was like, I love everyone. Everyone's okay. They hurt me, but may the grace of the Lord be with you. 
May the Lord watch between me and thee, far between me and thee. <laughs> while we're far apart from one another. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Inside of me, I thought I was good. But Jesus said, you have been secretly wishing that I hurt the people that hurt you. He said, these are not your people. These are my people. And, and, and low key, somebody say low key. Low key. low key. Inside of me, I was thinking like, Lord, just hit him with a stick with my name on it. Yeah. You ain't got to kill him. But just get a stick and put PG on there. Uh, push go. Just, just let, it, let, it, let it be something with PG on there. And just cane them real quick. <laughs> Prosperity and goodness. Whatever it is. But let it say PG, Jesus. He said, you have been secretly wishing that I hurt the people that hurt you. He said, these are not your people. These are my people. He says, from this point forward, I only want you to focus on the assignment that I have for you. Because I'm about to do something through you that the world has never seen. Jesus told me that. What did he do? He confronted me and exposed my lack. And so now... I can carry more weight now because I'm not holding stuff knowing that people are just people. It has nothing to do with me. Now I'm full and full of love. Someone say, Lord, Lord. give me a, a love encounter. Jesus goes a little bit further. And this is why I put a post on Facebook yesterday. It got a lot of attention, too. I didn't expect that. I put a post on, face, post on Facebook yesterday. Jesus said this. Look at verse 23. Verse 23 or verse 22 says, Judas not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. See it again? My father will love him. And then watch this. And we will come to him and make our home with him. I am the home of God. My lights were out. But my spiritual lights will never go out. I am the home of God. My water went out, but the oil is always flowing. I am. Someone say, I am. I am. The house of God. God. It, didn't say, uh, it didn't say the house of God. Say, I'm the home of God. If you're a house, that just means you got furniture and stuff. But when you're a home, you got love on the inside. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus said, man, if you... We're getting this reciprocal flow of love. I'm going to come to you. I'm coming. Lift your hands real quick. I'm coming. Oh, Forgive me for those of you who are not used to speaking in tongues, but that's a heavenly language. It's all throughout the Bible. Uh, the Lord is birthing something in right now. I, I, I need to pray. We all start praying. God's about to give us a love encounter. The Bible says that the love of God the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So now the Holy Spirit is coming to fill up those spaces that lack. He's coming to fill up those spaces where you were hurt as a child. He's coming to fill up those spaces in your life that cause you to be more connected to your possessions than your identity. He's coming to cause you to understand that your inheritance is not just from people. Your inheritance is from God and your inheritance is love. God give us. A love encounter right now. I feel it on the top of my head. Lift your hands and say, God, give me a love encounter. encounter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now be loved. Be loved. Be loved. Be loved. Be loved. Be loved right now. Mm. 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 Ooh, God. da 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 Oh, just let it happen to you. Ooh. How many feel that flowing? Such a strong thing. He says, he says, I call you deeper still. Deeper still. Deeper still. Just worshiping that for a few minutes. We'll let you get out of here. Hallelujah. Full of the love of God. Uh, Doing surgery this week. Deeper. 
step into a season of unmerited favor favor beyond what you could imagine because of his love you are no longer lacking you're no longer empty God is filling your love cup up in Jesus' name come on let's give him a shout of praise hallelujah wow place today or you're watching God has a special package for you a package of love you feel empty something is missing you feel lost and disconnected God wants to fill that void up with love the lostness is there because of a disconnect with him he sent Jesus into the world to connect you back to him all you have to do just give your life to him. Serve him. And he'll fill you up and bless you. If you're here and you say, I want to give my life to Jesus, or I want to give my life back to Jesus, or I want to be a part of faith culture, because this is a church that loves Jesus. If you're here, just uh, simply stick your hands in the air real quick if you're here. I want to give my life to the Lord. That's one. Anybody else? That's two. That's three. Anybody else? If you're online watching online and you want to make that commitment, I want you to pray this prayer, but I want you to, to put uh, I have decided. Go to myfcc.org and put I have decided, or you can put in your comments, I have decided. Those of you who are out there right now, I want you to comment, be loved, be loved, be loved, be loved. Repeat this prayer after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm coming to you, denouncing my old life, totally giving you me. You said in your word that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, 
I will be saved. So I confess, Jesus is my Lord. I believe he rose from the dead from my sins. And now I am saved. Welcome to the kingdom of God. If you live in another state, if you live somewhere that's not in Round Rock or around Austin, I want you to Google the words Spirit Filled Church. Spirit Filled Church. And I want you to find the nearest church. Go talk to the pastor or talk to one of the ministers and get in community. Become disciple because you can't do it by yourself and then become a servant in the house. If you're here and you made that decision, I want you too to go to myfcc.org. You need to do that right now. Go there and place I am new here or push I have decided. Well, let's get ready for our tithes and our offering. Tithes and offering. If you see the value in the kingdom of God and the value in your church, then I want you to be able to be a person who supports with your heart. Because the Bible says that where your treasure is is where your heart is. So you can't tell me, this is going to sound a little fussy here, but I got to be real. You cannot tell me that you love the ministry or that you love God if you're not giving. It's just simply not true. If you don't give, man, I did all this love stuff, so, but gotta be, I gotta be real. If you don't give, you don't love. I only have $5, Pastor. We're good. Give five cents. Come on, you can cash some bottles to get five cents. So, and those of you right now, this message of love should be compelling you and showing you where your lack is so that you can trust God enough to, to give to him. I got many testimonies, but I'll let you guys get out of here. You can give by going online, myfcc.org, or you can text to give. I love y'all. Remember, be loved.